every place where on the soles of your feet shall tread okay. shall be yours. He drew a circle in a manner of speaking. And he says, anywhere around this area that your soul touches, there are boundaries to the promise. They come to a family and they tell you that you people have 10 hectares. You know you can, they say you can build anywhere on this. You don't cross. Believers have messed up with this scripture. You don't go to any place. Anything God gives you, he puts a boundary. Samson had a boundary, but he had a promise. What was the promise? I will through your hand deliver Israel from the Philistines. But he had a boundary. It was because he left the boundary that he sunk. Every promise has a boundary. So this issue of I never done the promises, God will give you a promise. I will tell you, you see this corner? Don't cross. God gave Bishop David Oyedeko a very strong writing ministry. It's called the ministry of a scribe. Not every pastor can write. But God came to Bishop Oyedeko. Don't take one naira from the sales of your book. They are going around the world, but don't take the money. That was the boundary. Do you know Bishop Oyedeko? Doesn't take one naira from the sales of his book. And do you know a pastor of Winner's Chapel called me last week? He said, if Papa decides to take money from his books, God told him. Every other things you see they do. Bishop Oyedeko has not taken one naira from the sales of his book. Does that mean a pastor should not take money from his books? No, it's not your business. That was the boundary God gave him to the right of ministry. Every promise, find your boundaries. Don't cross them. Your brother may not know why. It's not their business. John the Baptist. He had the boundary. What do you think this boundary was? Do you know he was supposed to be ministering in the wilderness matter? You know? You don't know? Do you know? Do you know? He had no business with Herod's wife. He had no business with Herod's wife. Yes, he had no business. He crossed the line in ministry. That's why there are some pastors today, they are talking politics and election, they are going and they will soon go. Because God did not send them. They are men he sent to speak. They are men that will speak, oh, but they are sent. You will speak your own way end. Because he didn't send you to speak to political matters. The Bible calls the church the pillar, the ground of truth. If we don't talk about these truths on the ground of truth, we're in trouble. Hallelujah. Please greet somebody with and in the fellowship of Jesus Christ quickly this Lord's Day. Do it with excitement. Amen. Do it with excitement. Good to see you. And please, ushers, make sure people are sitting accordingly as the structure is at the moment. Praise God. Have you greeted the person beside you? You don't need fuel to greet, so greet, please. Amen. First John chapter 5. First John, it's in chapter number 5. Salman, make sure every other thing is on mute. Every single thing is on mute. Living by faith. So because... We are laying a foundation to this teaching. I like to say a few things as a preface. How many of you know what a preface is? So I now I have to do a preface. I like to announce to you that we have entered a season of the body of Christ that we need to live by faith. You can't afford to talk by faith anymore. I beg your pardon. You can't afford to talk about faith. Just talk about faith anymore. It will be dangerous. It will be lethal. It will be suicidal. As a Christian who comes to church and all they do is talk about faith and they don't know how to live by faith. These are not the times. And for people who have been following this ministry for a long time, if you listen carefully to your pastor, I'm talking about this house, and I believe I am. You would have noticed that God had been saying some things through me about the seasons that are coming. And last week, Sunday, I have a reason for repeating that word. I said things are going to get, or I believe God said things are going to get better. Does anybody believe? 
I know you find it hard to believe, but things are going to get better because there's a prophecy over Nigeria. Some of us are holding on because of the prophetic words, all right? There's something Piotin said about the middle bed, prophecy, all right? And there's a ministry now that is rising up from there. It took Dr. David Ogwili to let them know it was a prophetic word from Piotin. Why revival is spreading from that place? So there's a prophetic word over this nation. When I look at Nigeria, but with due respect to people who are of different nationalities listening to us, please permit me to come from this route. Amen. Okay. Uh, when I think of Nigeria, I don't think about the politics. I don't think about the politicians. I now know that those things matter. I think about the prophetic word over this nation. Now, but before things get better, God spoke on Sunday. There's going to be a shaking, and it was maybe 24 hours or less than 24 hours, a little bit over 24 hours. And we began to see the things that we're seeing in the nation. Um, I was with a mentor of mine in the faith yesterday. And of course, I can't, I'm not permitted to say the things that I know and I heard in that meeting. Uh, you need faith to survive. Uh, the believer needs faith. So, how many of you have had um, an old phone before that you had to go and pick up? That you had to go and dust. A spare phone you kept somewhere. It was working. And you had need of it and you picked it up. Anybody here? Uh -huh. I'm sorry to say it shouldn't be despair. But for those of you who have left the subject of faith and the life of faith, it's time to go and pick it up and dust it up. Because we're in a season where your money will not save you. Hear me? I know you have 10 million in the account. But your money will not save you. In fact, I said to somebody, by what is happening, your money in the bank account has reduced by some percentages. You believe that? It's got, lying there is half, like 50%. So how can you be bragging on that? No. No. So we are living in those times. And God, I asked the Lord because I was, I was going to really teach on this month, consecration. I told you God has been speaking to me about character. All right? But then again, I heard not now. The just shall live. If you are going to not just survive, if you're going to leave, it's going to be by faith. This is my preface. You understand why this teaching series is coming? Do you understand why this teaching series is coming? You need faith. Everybody, in fact, the Bible talks about the deceitfulness of riches. You know, one time my pastor was teaching on the subject of faith and there was this woman, her husband was a wealthy bank manager. In those days, she never took the, t the teaching seriously. She would not come for the subject of faith. The man too won't come for the subject of faith. And then something happened and he was sacked. Something I wanted to say, but I won't say it. He was sacked. And then crisis came. He discovered that he was living on his salary. So when he came to my pastor, my pastor, and I like my pastor, because you always need a strong pastor. A pastor who will respect you, but not condone your misbehavior. He said, oh, when I teach the subject of faith, because you had a good life, you felt you didn't need it. And that's what is called the deceitfulness of riches. For, for, so for those of you who have economic stability, don't think this message is not for you. It's the deceitfulness of riches. Don't think it's for people who are looking for how to eat up a rent. It's for everybody. Are you the just? Are you justified? You have to live by faith. Amen? 1 John 5, 4. If you found it, please stand for the reading of God's word as our custom is in this house. Just one verse, we'll read together. I'd like for us to fill this room with the power of God's word. Two, three, go. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Can we read it two more times? Two, three, go. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. One last time. For whatsoever is born of God overcome the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Sweet Holy Spirit, 
this is not rhetorics this is not vain speaking you know i mean it from the depth of my heart and so i ask for your help that you will help me to bring your counsel your word to your people to every situation i know people are going through things all over the world under the sound of my voice i ask that you will use me as a conduit to bring your word your counsel your encouragement and your rhema to people to the end that the church is edified and jesus alone is glorified so i declare by faith through grace i'm anointed to teach your people are anointed to hear this atmosphere is anointed and conducive for the ministry and the sowing of your word to the praise and glory of your name it's in jesus name we have prayed and god's people said slap somebody on the high five and tell him you have to live by faith and please you may be seated in the presence of god so in the epistle first john chapter four chapter five is this 10 p.m 10 a.m beg your pardon is it 10 i can't see this correctly almost 10 okay for whatsoever is born of god overcometh the world and this is the victory let's stay with this scripture a bit this morning i know you're familiar with it but please don't be familiar this morning for whatsoever is born of god overcometh the world so first thing i have you note is it's not whosoever it's talk to me church it's whatsoever so what do you think that includes you know i ask questions a lot it's a teaching church so please bear with me what do you think that includes what does what does whatsoever entail or include do you think it includes human beings are you sure let me ask again so i can confuse you people not confusing the teaching shake your conviction in that answer Whatsoever does it include a human being, a homo sapien? You sure? Does it include businesses, ideas? What else? Since you know what it includes, so help me. Career, your job, your children, your children their school a decision to do something a decision they are all in the category of a whatsoever so let me ask again does it include a human being how do you know because if you read further in the context it says whatsoever is over and this is the victory so what is the statement that tells you that whatsoever in that verse includes a human being our faith good good i'm proud of you give yourself a hand give yourself a hand clap if you didn't see our faith don't clap <laughs> that's how it went i've told you you don't interpret scripture from a verse or a phrase go down and scripture will interpret itself simple the word of god is not confusing it's people who are not skilled that try to interpret it that confuse people so this is the victory that overcomes the word even our so it includes us is that okay good so that's the first thing whatsoever you understand whatsoever now now the next word is born genio in the greek gene dna whatsoever is born of god overcomes the world so i want to ask the women a question and please i need a response don't keep me quiet please except you the only reason you shouldn't respond is if you've not had a child and i say that respectfully as in if you've not pushed no even if you have not pushed you know women who don't who are not yet married they're also interested when the woman gives birth have you noticed they, they want to find out how it is can i have a witness please when you're single you want to find out so how, how does it feel and all of that and all of that so both women and men men you're involved so let me ask the question when a child is born there are two things that people ask or want to know number one what do you think it is how many of you said sex let me see your head if you are that type when you hear that your friend or somebody you're close to has been delivered of a child what's the first thing your mind thinks of knowing if you think of sex let me see your hand okay so what do you think of you don't think of sex like well, what do you think when the baby is born do you think of what's the first thing that comes to your mind the question that comes to your mind nothing <laughs> how many of you think of money first how the father will take care of the child 
So the first thing we want to know, boy or girl? How do we say it in Yoruba? Or, or what? Forget that. But you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> that, that's, that's advanced for me. Yes, I'm saying. So boy or girl. What do we say in Igbo language? Woke or wine. Not wine, please, for those who are not of that nation. It's not wine, wine. You see, wine and wine. Women behave like wine. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm joking. No. It's a joke. Women don't behave like wine, praise God. <laughs> but you know that there's a truth in it. They behave like wine. <laughs> praise God. So I want to know the sex. What's the next thing people, you think people ask of? If you get it, I'll give you Tom Tom after the service. My prophetic Tom Tom. How many of you think of who the baby looks like? That's when you see the baby. Okay. So apart from that, what else do you think when you think of a baby? So as a woman, you think, okay, I hope she's alive. That's what you think of, right? How many of you agree with her? All the men are looking strangely. Don't worry, you understand very soon when you get married. The second question is for the women to answer. What do you think when the baby is born? This is only women. Like only women can get this one. No man in this hall can get it. No man. I've helped you. I've given you an expo. I've helped you. When a baby is born, everybody wants to find out, even men. Male or female? After that, this next question, I, I think it's only women that can ask. Thank you. Huh? Whether it's CS or natural birth. CS is natural. I don't want to go there. I know CS is not natural. As in, if you say it's not natural, it's a sensitive topic in the body of Christ. So, so is that supernatural or traditional? <laughs> There's something they call it, but I'm not just free to say it here. It's not bad. It's in medical books, but it sounds somehow from my mouth. So it's CS or the other, okay, normal birth. I understand what you mean. You know why I'm saying that? So that people who gave birth to CS, there's a people, there are some people in the body of Christ that have been victimized. Some have be, even been told that they are witches and things like that. That's why they gave birth to CS. So it's a sensitive topic. So if you say normal birth and you feel people who went through CS, it's not normal. You can, as a pastor, it can cause trouble. So all of them are normal. You understand what I mean? You are normal. Very normal. I have told people in counseling when I look at the situation. I pray and pray and pray, and in my spirit, I heard, let them induce her, see us, now. Or else you lose the mother and lose the baby. And in some situations, my pastor handled one, let them do see us. And the doctor said, how did you, because, are you sure? By the time they opened it, they said, who told you to do see us? He said, my pastor. He said, if we were one minute late, the baby would have died. One minute more. God is God. He can use a plane to take you somewhere. He can use a car to take you somewhere. Say. So, they are all normal birth. You understand? Praise God. But I understand what you're saying. Now, people want to find out if it's cesarean session, right? Is this section or session? Huh? You people don't know too. CS. They see there. Oh, good. So, cesarean section. Okay. Or if it's normal birth. There's, you got it too, but you've not hit the nail on the head. Women think of that. CS or she pushed. There's something that connotes. Well, you are correct. You, are not, you have not even hit it yet, but you are close. There's one more. The size of the baby. That determines the tear. If they, are you hear what I'm saying? Yeah? Have you seen women talk about it's too big old. Yeah, ah, she has given birth. Hey, what's the size? Uh, what's the kg we use? Uh, we have, I've forgotten the kg. Huh? Which, which, which number is big? Follow me. I'm teaching scripture. It's not biology class. We'll get there. So if it's 4.5, it's big. Very big. Very big. So have you heard people 4.5? Have you heard people 5? When women hear that, what do they say? They yell. They begin to imagine. They, I'm sure they taught her. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when the baby is born, two major things. There are many things. The men think different things. Trust me on that. But basically, people want to find out, the generality of persons want to find out the sex, male or female. Is that correct? 
And another thing that fascinates people is the size of the baby. It's too big. Oh, hey, this one giant. Be like the papa or be like the mama. And the funny thing is that nature just busts your bubble. Two, three months later, the person will just reduce and remain small. I've seen that. Um, so what's the, what's the force about? But when it comes to birthing things in the spirit, sex is not considered. See the question. For whatsoever is born of God, you are not seeing sex here. You know the matter here, who gave birth? I'll say that again. When we give birth here, people want to find out or woke or why, as the Igbo say. And the Yoruba says something too, which means, is it a man or a woman? What's the size? Vaginal birth or cesarean section? People find out many things. Some people go as far as saying, eh, which hospital? Do I have any woman here who wants to know the hospital too? Which hospital? Many things. But when something in the spirit is given birth to, nobody looks at size nobody looks at the hospital the only thing you look for when something is being birthed in the spirit is who gave birth for whatsoever that is born of god so the question now let, let me let me bring it home if a church is set up by god what are the things nigerians will look for in the church be very sincere how big it is right talk to me church the size of the church the parking lot don't pretend like you don't know what i'm saying now you understand what i'm saying okay what what what, what are, what's the yardstick for a church that is the hand of god is upon in nigeria not in the bible in nigeria traffic of people is that okay what else signs and wonders miracles lives changing what else Oh, the, you don't know that the parking lot is one of them the kind of cars and all of that now is he wrong is that a wrong yardstick yes. it's a wrong yardstick but can the hand of god be upon the church and they have those things yes. good but when things are born of god what we consider is who gave birth to it not the size are you getting what i'm saying why am i saying this because in the school of faith what will survive in the times we're entering are things only born of god and if you are a person that magnifies size of a thing you will miss out on things born of god somebody comes to you and says come on, i have this business idea you look at the person you look at the shoe shoe is started meanwhile that's the business idea that if you hook up to it it will lead you to your prosperity but you look at the person who is bringing the idea you have not even gone to ask the holy spirit is this thing born of god should i invest in this business what you are looking at is the person's size the person's level you will miss out on the things born of god are you getting what i'm saying when we're talking about things born of god it is who gave birth to it not the size that matters now let me bring the word home if you are going to survive and succeed in the days ahead you must do things that are born of god businesses that are born of god i know what you people are saying what about um dangote i think that man's cv has risen now right huh what of give me the names or ted Ola, right give me the next name because i know what some of you are asking because a good teacher must answer the questions that you are not saying verbally. Elon Musk at their business is born of God. I will show you why you cannot compare yourself to those people. It's in the same verse. But let's stick with this first. Whatsoever is born of God. In this season, you cannot be stepping into a business that is not a God idea. It may be a bright idea, but it's not a God idea. It must be born of God and once it's born of god no matter how insignificant it looks please stay with it it's not about the size it's about who gave birth to it that's how you should look at church it's really not a, and please don't get me wrong i covet multitudes pray about i pray about it this morning to covet it but it's not about the size it's not about the crowd it's is it jesus that started the church because if it's born of god it will overcome Hmm. if it's born of god church hear me it will overcome if it's not born of god it will sink so your business must be born of god though. business people the next dimension of your business can't just be by flesh 
we have entered the days that bright ideas will be swallowed it is kingdom against kingdom in these last days your decision for where to relocate to or to live must be born of god or else i've said enough about that one i'm glad you are the one who defined that whatsoever includes inanimate things too am i correct so it must be born of god your decision to marry that girl must be born of god if it's going to survive in the last days i'm sure you hear of the crazy things happening on social media how ladies boldly come out some some boldly come out and say things like i live i live in a particular life right now and if he's not going to upgrade it then there's no need for him i mean 27 30 years ago that was alien i told young men in this church the season i married and the season that is upon you are two different seasons your choice must be born of god oh yeah and ladies your decision to say yes to a man must be born of god you see this issue of them um, now i was driving to church okay i didn't drive yesterday because of uh, i didn't get fuel praise god so i took a uh, uber forget the details i shall took a i think it was both when i got to church so as i was coming you know they always usually play radio huh so i like news i was listening to news and there's this man i don't know i think i recognize his voice somewhere in social media but i couldn't place a face to his name and he began to hack down the ministry of pastors hack it so bad and it was a topic of marriage how dare you say a man of god will confirm and, and pray with you on a life partner forget that thing just go for character somebody not called him but somebody not called him and said i need a god-fearing person and the guy said fine english now the, the 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 fact that the person is speaking fine english boldly does not mean it's correct i want to say that again the fact that somebody is speaking with erudite elocution does not mean that the person is correct he can be speaking grammar and he's wrong and somebody can be missing the grammar and he's right in the in the kingdom in fact even in nature you can be speaking Bangladesh, speaking big big english and you don't know what you're saying but this guy was fluent somebody called in he said but how we need to go for a god-fearing person and the guy said that was you you will know error just wait error will expose itself you know that this person has been hot i'm going somewhere this person has been hurt by a church or by a pastor so this is just a personal attack and he has a platform and he, next thing i heard was god-fearing who is not god-fearing everybody in this world is god-fearing which is a god-fearing you now quoted that the bible says which is uh, the devil believes and also trembles everybody is god-fearing just choose how can you be going to a pastor? Some people called, yes, all these pastors. You know why? You know why? As I was speaking, there's, there's one I will, I, will, I, will, I will just let you into. I was one of my mentors in the faith yesterday. And the failed prophecies of some charlatans have brought some level of discredit on the church. And that's why it's paining me. But the voice of the, the voice of the real people sent with a message, you didn't hear them. I can beat my chest. Did you hear them? When did you see Reverend Arigu say this one win? They are teaching the word. Now, because of this, there's an attack now. And what pastors can say if they are, if their prophecies failed, but the, I'm sorry to say the idiot should ask himself if the pastor in question is the pastor that prophesied. I mean, it's, it's, it's just crazy. But I don't blame them. It's because of failed charlatans who came. In fact, new ones have come out this morning. Last, last night stroke this morning and I heard things that are too hard for me to say but what we need to ask ourselves is that those people that spoke was he born of God was he born of God did God send them I don't want to get into politics matter but I have to adjust it because the moment I said it has discredited some churches I saw some of you sh shake your head so I know that maybe you people are going through it but you can never hold me to any prophecy. Have I come here to prophesy who will win? I don't even know their name. I don't have time for that. I have too much scriptures to study than to be given permutations on politics. But you must understand that it's an attack on your faith. Because when you strike the shepherd or the priestly ministry, the sheep will scatter. So know the attack of the enemy. If you are in a false church, you should live there, but not your pastors are false. 
So what you should ask yourself is, is it born of God? Whenever you are hearing things, is it born of God? It's not about the size. And the people that give some of these crazy prophecies, they have large crowd. Am I correct? Yeah. But as a believer, you should get to the point where you find out, is this born of God? Because if it's born of God, the size don't matter. At least at the beginning. The Bible says the kingdom of God is like a man who should plant seed. And the seed will grow. It knoweth not how, but it begins with a seed. So I said that to say, the choice of a spouse must be born of God. And oftentimes, God can put a pastor in your life to confirm it. Now, I'm very sensitive. I am very, it's a slippery ground. My wife knows. When you want to push me to the point where there are people in this place who have wanted me to say, it's this person. I will never do it. In fact, there's one I love so much. You know, you know pastoral love, oh. You know what I mean by pastoral love? Oh, yes. Even Jesus. So there are some people. I love everybody, not some people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> ah! I was tempted. I said, no. So I'm going to lay the cards before you. This is it. This is it. But sitting here, I can tell you, standing here, I'm not sitting. I can tell you who should marry who in this church. I need to be 100% accurate. Not everybody, but they have to find it by themselves. So that when problems start, yes, they won't be using me to give testimony on Echo FM. But God still speaks about marriages. Yes, he does. In fact, that was the contention of that guy in radio, that God doesn't talk about marriages. It's a lie. Do you know God still tells people who to marry? If he's not born of God, he won't survive. That's why some marriages are shaking, because he wasn't born of God. The foundation is not of God. Is somebody in church? It has to be it has to be born of God. That your relocation, that masters you want to do, have you sought God about it? Because if it's not of God, let me tell you what will happen. The Bible says, for whatsoever that is born of God, overcome the world. So let me face the Dangote matter and all these great men who are not born again. Uh, have you, have you re- read on social media? All these guys don't have money, they don't go to church, they don't pay tight. So I want to explain to you why they don't fall in this category. The Bible says, whatsoever is born of God overcoming the world. The word world there is cosmos. Cosmos means the orderly arrangement of things. System. That's what cosmos means. This world has a system. Do you know that? Do you know this world has a system? If you study deeply, you observe that there's a system at work, even in this nation. The system is bigger than good personalities. I'll stop there. Do you understand what I'm saying? Is anybody in church this morning? There's a system. And the system is large, so you know. The system is big. There's also a system in America. It's a Babylonian system. So, things born of God is a threat to the system. Let me say it again. Things that are born of God is a threat to the existing system that is in the world. Because Satan knows that if I allow this thing that is born of God, this idea, this business, this enterprise, this marriage that is born of God, to rise, it will affect my system on the earth. So why will somebody whose business is not born of God be a threat to the system of the devil that is not born of God? Do you understand what I said? They are not a threat to him, but you are a threat to him. Your business will bring righteousness. Your prosperity will bring godliness. The system of this world will not allow that. Let me tell you how the system of this world works. Let me tell you. Let me just put it in one statement. I'll wait for all of you to write. I want you to look up and hear this. And I'll give you a scripture to back it. This is not, uh, what do you call it, conspiracy theory. I want to show you something about the system of this world. If you want to make money and rise and thrive by the system of this world, this is, this is the payment package. The package is your soul. Do you hear what I said? There are people who have sold their souls to Satan. Do you know? And money will never be their problem. The only thing they may have along the way, I've discovered that there are some of them go crazy. But the exchange is your soul. Pastor, conspiracy theory. No, let me show you scripture. What shall cosmos, cosmos, world? What shall it profit a man to gain the whole world, systems, cosmos, and lose because the exchange to rise in the cosmos is so? Did you see that? It's the soul of man. It's the soul of man. And you, you have given your, your heart to Jesus Christ. So why do you think that the system will support you? That's why your idea and everything you do must be born of God. 
If he's not born of God, it will not be able to face the onslaught of the kingdom of darkness. Don't just wake up in this time and say, oh, there's hardship. Let me start this business. No, 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 no. This is not the time to do that kind of thing. But this is not the time to waste money with that kind of thing. You stay in the place of prayer. Father, am I supposed to do this thing? Is this your will? So whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. I want everybody to read the next statement because that's where we begin now the teaching of faith. Everybody please read. No, I don't like it. It's not full enough. Everybody please read. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. What is the world? The system, right? The system. Do you know this system is corrupt? Not the system of Nigeria alone. Some of you are making the mistake. The system of the world is a corrupt system. Do you agree? You agree? Okay. There's a statement here that we often miss, but it's very powerful. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. It is an oxymoron. It's a contradiction. So I'm going to ask a question. IBK, if, do you have a challenge in your life now? If you have a challenge in your life, let me see your hand. That doesn't mean you're not spiritual. If you have a challenge in your life, praise God. I have. So if you have, wave. Wave to Jesus. Praise God. You have a challenge. Everybody has. Will your challenge ever stop? Will you ever stop having challenges? Do you see Jesus? You will never have challenges, right? How many of you agree to that? Or you are saying to fear qua? No, the word of God says it. <laughs> Is that okay? The word of God said you are going to have challenges, but he says you should be of good cheer for I've overcome. Now I want to ask you a question. So I began, you were the one, you have a challenge, right? If you have if you succeed and you beat the challenge, have you overcome? Good. Is that correct? Is that correct? Uh, I said is that correct? Be, be bold in your conviction. So you that has a challenge there now, listening to me, if you overcome that challenge, I've given you the word already. If you beat the challenge hands down, have you overcome? Can we give an, have an example of a challenge? I know you don't want to tell us, but uh, is there anybody who can share? If you can't share, I'll give you one. I'll give you one of my challenges, if you can give me one of your challenges. Anybody with a challenge here that wants you want to share? Share they say a problem, what do you call it? <laughs> say, Pastor, it's not this kind of sharing. You know. <laughs> okay, so, so I should, let, me, let me use myself as a lamb for the sacrifice. So this is my challenge. Church property. I sleep it. I wake up with it. I confess. I pray. Rabakas katamania mukama. dugas. My friend called me. <laughs> my friend called me, joining his faith with me. <laughs> Two of my friends. One said, Ah! The problem is that where your ministry is, the land there, will I get power? Million, 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 because they are kind of in the suburbs. You know? They're like, Ha! Now, wow. They were encouraging me, but when did I, when did I say, but now, wow, you know the way land is, you know, but all of that. So one said that he was praying. He said one day he was praying for our church property. He said, that's why you must have covenant friends and brothers who love you, no competition. He said, say God cause land to come out of water. He said, the God who did that will cause land to come out of land. That he was just meditating one day. Say, say water. God brought land from water. He said, that God can come out. This one is another teaching. I don't want to go there. You must have people in your life. The Bible says, for we wrestle, not I wrestle. Some of you are wrestling alone. You must have people that wrestle with you over a matter. There are things you handle alone. You can handle headache alone. Oga, if it graduates to cancer, don't do it alone. Did you hear what I said? You must have people. For we wrestle. We, we, not I. So he was talking and um, you know, that's my challenge now. Church property. It's not impossible. Physically, we, we can't do it. But with God, I know all things are possible. That's a huge challenge. So if you hear tomorrow that I call you that God has given us a property at Wemco. Thank you for that. Has my challenge been solved? 
can we say we have overcome that challenge wave your hands if you believe we've overcome if god gives us a property we're, we're good praise god amen one of the reasons why we need to a place so that when i raise my hand i won't be hitting the ceiling <laughs> i can't say god should reduce my height because of where we are no <laughs> but from this scripture okay. Hmm? okay don't worry that was ministry i did and this is the victory that overcomes the world even our faith so from scripture look at it i want to stand with all of you so we can look at it something is not right grammatically there you overcome to have victory you don't have victory to overcome it is when you overcome that you have victory but scripture says you enter victory to overcome we're entering the school of faith now if you get the point i'm about to teach now your faith will be kicking you can't overcome from defeat you must have succeeded first to overcome i'll explain it you must have stepped into a place of victory for you to overcome that's why i've often said that we do not fight from defeat we fight from victory that point you are seeing it in scripture here scripture says this and i'll tell you what the victory is because the victory is faith this is the victory that overcomes how can you talk about victory and still talk about overcoming i thought a victor is an overcomer no that means in the realm of the spirit you must have entered a position where you have it before you have it that is the victory and if i can get you to come here i can close you see that challenge you are facing until you step into the place of victory in the spirit you will not overcome it that woman trusting god for a child until you get to the point where you know that 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 you're a mother you won't overcome that situation so the fight of faith is the fight to get your place and your spirit into that position of victory so that you can overcome it in the physical you can't be facing a challenge in faith and you are you are talking to it from a victim perspective like you are defeated let's look at um, david what did david do david faced goliath you know he didn't face goliath from defeat he would have died he faced goliath from victory what was the victory the victory he had from the past with the lion and the bear he had that victory in his spirit this is where faith begins though faith is the victory that's why scripture says this is the victory that overcome the world even our faith so our faith is the victory until you enter the position where nobody can talk you out of it you will not have it that is the victory in the spirit have you ever wondered why people say if you are healed why are you still sick anybody here you've heard that before if god has blessed you why is it that you're looking for rent they don't understand that in the realm of the spirit you have the rent you have entered into that space i'm not saying you should go and be paying your rent in the spirit though. but what i'm saying is that <laughs> you would have entered the position of victory in your spirit before you overcome the situation you can't be facing a situation from the place of defeat and defeat and the victory has a location i repeat defeat and victory has a location you know where the location is inside you and when god began to teach me this dimension of faith i discovered that people who broke through are people who had victory on the inside first before they face the situation on the outside this is the victory that overcomes naturally when you have overcome you are victorious but there's a victory you must attain before you overcome is it possible that you have been facing your situation with defeat on the inside david looked at goliath and he said something very powerful I mean that david was he was either crazy or he had victory you look at a giant and you look at him he said listen you will not be different when i'm done with you take off your head from your neck uh -uh. doesn't that look or sound like a boy who has acted out a script before he came from the place of victory to face goliath this is the victory so you must have that thing in your spirit first before you have it in the physical and let me tell you one of the proofs that you have it in your spirit nobody can take it away from you nobody even the price of fuel can't take it away from you you know that you know that you have entered it somebody please repeat after me this is the victory say it one more time this is the victory that overcomes the world so that means i need victory to overcome
I don't need to overcome to get into victory. We receive the victory from Christ first and then face the situation to overcome. No Christian faces a challenge with defeat and succeeds. That's why you have heard people say faith did not work. No, faith always works. It always works. If faith does not work, God will self-destruct. Yeah. The problem is, did you enter faith? You may probably we had hope, not faith. Anybody here who has a persuasion about something in the future that they don't have here? And please, before you raise your hand, think well, because I'm going to ask you a question. Who has a challenge here, but you're persuaded that you, you have it? You have it. Do I know the challenge? Yeah, sure. But, uh, do I know the challenge? I don't know the need. Good. But you know the need. Does your husband know the need? Good. Even if they don't promote you the next four years, do you believe it will still happen? That's wrong. If they don't allow your husband to come back to Lagos and that prayer is never answered, will this still happen? You're sure. Can you be 30 and know that you will marry? And you hit 30. But you know that you will marry. You just know your husband is somewhere. You feel it. Are you there? Okay. Marriage is not your problem. Everybody has married except this one. So let me come here. <laughs> let me ask a man here. Any younger. Do you, if, don't, not, not faith. Faith, yeah, but faith from conviction. If you are here and you know that you are going to be wealthy financially, you know it. You know it. And you do probably don't have tenor to rob against another tenor. You don't even have ten to rob. But you know you are wealthy. Let me see your hand. Everybody raise your hand. Even though you don't have a job now, you know it. That is the position of victory. That is the fight you must fight to. That's the place you must fight to get into. Where you know that you know that you know. They asked Dr. Larry Lee, how do you know you're born again? Born again. He said, I know in my Noah. And that word never left me. How do you know you're born again? I know in my Noah. It's here. I just know. How do I know that the world will hear me? It's here. I just know. And that's the fight. That's the place you must fight to enter. When you enter that zone, Satan himself knows that he can't defeat you. Does anybody get the victory I'm talking about? The victory in your spirit. Then when you have it, then you can overcome in the physical. Victory before overcoming is the rule of the game in the school of faith. It's not waiting to overcome to be victorious. You are already victorious. Get into the position. Get into the position. You know, there's no athlete that can afford not to be in shape. If he's not in shape, he has lost contract. Do you know what athletes do to get in shape? You want to be messy, messy, messy. He doesn't have messy on his body. No messy on the veins. They walk. You know George upon where? Now, George, where's the president of Liberia, right? You know, he can Who is the recent big boy now on the field? Aland. Do you know he George where? Cannot stand him in the pitch. Now, he can't try it. The pot belly won't let him because he has stopped training. The truth of the matter is that if you follow those people's schedule, you may die with your current schedule. I repeat, if you see what they do to stay in shape, to be able to be that valuable, a believer must be doing some things to get fit and to stay into the place where he can step into the place of victory in the spirit. Because Satan does not give announcement for challenges. You must be fit. And the things that will put you in the place of victory. Some of you, you listen to messages. It may be gospel songs. There are some specific anointed ministries that when you listen to, you just, you come out from where you come, you enter your office, you enter your office like a lion. There's victory in your spirit. And that is the victory that will help you to overcome. The problem is that battles come, we want to overcome, but there's defeat on the inside. 